And we're still working out all the kinks, ladies and gentlemen. It's not a kink. It's just not centered. Well, it's a minor kink. You know, the kinks were a big rock group at one time. So now it's centered horizontally. Transform. Oh, yeah. Please transform um, it. Uh, where's the one to pull to the bottom? I don't know. <laughs> How you doing, Pops? I, I'm, look, you just move it down like that. All right. Hi there, Pops. How you doing? I, I'm well, and you? I'm okay. Um, I'm doing well. So yeah. before we get into tonight's stream, members only stream. Yes. It's a Thursday night. Just kidding. It's Tuesday night. Yes. Um, thank you everyone for making it here on Tuesday. Let's start with some updates, just some general news. People have maybe heard or seen some things. So let's just yeah. set the record straight from Jump Street. Um, exciting times. Things going on right now for the just YA 21 community. 21 Jump Street or? No. Oh, no. Just, just Jump Street. Um, here, you share the news. You share what's going on. What's the news? Okay, come on. <laughs> what? Come on. Um, I don't know. Somebody raised money. <laughs> Did somebody raise money? All right. So if you want the car buying advice and we're going to open up the YA community and we're going to answer all the questions. If you if you came here for that, fast yeah. forward like five minutes. Yeah. Um, and if you don't want to hear this, then, you know, you can just, you know, You're we won't be it. offended. Yeah. We won't be offended. But yes, we um, we raised. Well, here, I'll share my screen. Um, this is just to. Let the YA community know what's going on. So I posted back on my LinkedIn. I'll be posting on the YA community soon. But yeah, we raised a couple million dollars. That's more than a couple. Which is pretty cool. That's a couple, couple. That's a couple, 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 couple. Yeah, because yeah, a couple would be two. So you you raised uh, a couple, couple. So we raised $4.2 million. I wrote this whole thing, um, you know, why we decided to do this, um, how we're going to invest it. Yeah. And what does success look like? Because when I was putting myself in your shoes, I was thinking to myself, well, if these guys just raised $4 million, sounds like raise on payroll, but like, you know, are they like selling themselves out? Like, what are they doing? So I, I wrote this and I wanted everyone to know, like, are, are we selling ourselves out? Did you read it? You commented on it twice. Uh, what were my comments? Uh, Mike Dean, I'll say thank you, Mike, for, yeah. for commenting. Um, uh, no, I don't want to be that bold, but I had one other comment. Yeah. <laughs> Where is the damn I couldn't be prouder reaction emoji? There I you couldn't go. find that. There you go. Yeah, where is that one? So we did this. This is a big deal because now we are hiring. So if you go on our website, there's now a careers thing. Ooh. Yeah, I know. And we've got all these open positions. So if you know someone, or and we're opening up an office in Bethesda, Maryland, um, outside Washington, D.C. So if anyone knows people in Bethesda, Maryland, or in the D.C. area. Or that might even want to consider moving to the D.C. Yeah, we'll the DC area. good people. Yeah. Or the auto advocate, um, which is super cool. That's, um, that's people that are in our community that are former dealership staff, people like my dad, people like me, people like Justice, people like Kimberly, who are in here helping to answer questions and also helping with the live chat. So anyway, we're hiring a bunch of different things. We need help. That's why we raised the money where, so that we can actually where's, invest in. Where's, where's my position? You're an auto advocate. You're the auto advocate. <laughs> oh. So anyway, there you go. That's well, the, you um, let me remove that. Um, let me stop when should sharing. I expect my job offer? Uh -huh, uh -huh. Soon <laughs> enough. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah charles miller saying hello guys i saw your ya story on wbal tv which was on google news yesterday congrats um it's great to hear how far you guys have come god bless west coast charlie thank you for that charlie um, thank you thank you so much yeah it, it is Dean. kind of amazing it's pretty cool yeah, yeah. but anyway the reason we did it is so that we can really try and grow this more effectively so there you go is that going to require us to be more professional Mm -mm. Okay, good. Thank God for that. No, I think what's like mm. endearing about YA is the yeah. fact that like we're authentic. Yeah. Uh, did your venture capitalist investors say that I have to get nicer t-shirts or anything? <laughs> no change of t-shirts. Powered shirts. <laughs> Let's hop into tonight's okay. members only stream before my dad pulls my leg even more on that <laughs> stuff. Um, all right. So let's share the screen again, Pops, and let's get into it. Okay. So we I want to get into it. Let's go. We're in live stream. Yes, we are. Members only stream. Yes. Can we put the air on, man? I'm already sweating. Oh, come on. I've got it set at 68 in here. What do you want? It doesn't me? turn on. Yeah, it's just, you know, this is what happens when you have a bowl of hot soup <laughs> before before you go on. I, I just, you know, yeah. Okay, I just put it on high. It just it never turns on. Okay. I'm already schwitzing, man. The lights get hot. 
this. I'll put. I'll get some. Apparently, so there. do you. Ooh, that feels good. Yeah. Good. Okay. I'm glad. From. <laughs> I'm gonna grab yeah. water to put on my. Okay, Lamingus Menicus. Yeah. With 10 hours ago, this is literally the first comment of the night. Yeah. Ray, which part of the 2 p.m. ice cream is the best? The toppings, the fruits, or the ice cream itself? And more importantly, ice cream or custard? What is your answer, Pops? Well, I am definitely an ice cream guy. Not a custard guy? No. All right, not, what's not the best really. part? Uh, well, I, I kind of like I kind of like the uh, the toppings. You like the toppings? Yeah. Also, everyone that's on the stream, bear with me for a second. I'm going to stop sharing this way. Uh, and you're going to share another way? Well, because we did the remote one the other day, I kind of got confused with how I had set this up. So give me one second. Okay. Just working the kinks out, ladies and gentlemen. Right they there, were, they were right a there. great... It's right, there. It's right there. They were a great rock band. So what's your answer? What? Ice cream, toppings, or fruit? What's the best part? The ice cream. Robert Valeno. Let's see if we can have balls. So let me just say... You know, nobody said, I scream, you scream, we all scream for ice cream. That's what they say. They don't say, I scream, you scream, we all scream for the fruit. <laughs> <laughs> and if they do, I never heard it before. All right, Robert has a, a somewhat, a seemingly real question. Can I call in tonight for three questions regarding an out-of-state new car purchase, extended warranties, and dealer-added accessory installation? Now, please, thanks. Yeah, yes, we can yes. open up. Well, well, um, let's go through here, and then we'll yeah. open up the phone lines yeah, for members. But only. there's no guarantee that Robert will be able to get through. So, so Robert, don't feel bad about actually DM me your number, Robert, and I'll we'll or, call you. Or actually posting your questions in here, and we'll go through them one by one. Yeah, that would also work. Yeah, Mike Lyon. Yeah. Long time, first time. Thank you, sir. Yes. You guys are fantastic. Well, thank you. Mike looks fantastic in yeah. this photo. Let's looks like he's in good up, shape, bro. too. Jeez. Yeah. Yeah. He is yeah. in good shape. That's a yeah. nice beard. Yeah. And, and he's filling the car up with gas. Looks like looks like he is. He is indeed. Yeah. All right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sold my 2020 Sierra SLT with 19,000 miles after 18 months. Made a grand. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Who said cars aren't an appreciating asset? That is going to get tonight's first. Uh -oh. oh, wait a second. Nights first. Yeah. Oh, do I have to put my? Can I do it right? I don't know. Can you? Down the ring, Shevska. Step up. Approval. <laughs> Why would I press the stamp of approval button? Did it go to this? I don't know. There we go. That's yeah. what I meant to do. Okay. All right. We're back to this. Oh. That's awesome. Making eight grand on a yeah, on, yeah, in eighteen months. Yeah, yeah. All right. Been driving his dad's GN. G, GNC. That would be compressed. <sighs> CNG Civic. Gas? With yeah. 300,000 miles trying to time the market. Problem, my wife and teenage boys are embarrassed. Yeah. yeah. I'm perfectly happy searching out uh, CNG, uh, compressed yeah. natural gas pumps at, at waiting while waiting for Sierra's to come back and stock and down price. But the pressure is building at home. I feel my masculinity is in question with my own flesh and blood. Help. Should I let them pressure me into buying too soon? This is a great question. Okay. Well, Mike, let me help you with a real man. A oh, my real gosh, be man, careful, please. A real man uh, doesn't let his teenagers tell him what to do. It's not a real man. I'm a looking. person. A real person. A circle. A circle. <laughs> <laughs> you just got to be careful, man. Right. Got to be careful. Yeah. Okay. You, you, you do whatever is best for you based on... Based on well, how your family is going to react, and if they're embarrassed, shame on them. I you know, Dad's that. ahead of the game. You're the one that's that's making all the stuff they want to happen. Dad takes it. Well, you don't know that. Perhaps well, <laughs> you're the one. Yeah, and, yeah. Perhaps and his partner and his partner. Yeah, it's a nice photo. It really is. All right, from Daniel. Yeah. I recently started an online purchase of a 2022 Acura MDX Advanced model. It was a red MDX with a VIN with VIN and stock number. Okay. Their website said it was on the lot. I was happy with the price and breakdown. I submitted my information. Everything was accepted, and all I needed to do is submit my down payment. I received an email the next day stating that they didn't have that car in stock. They said all they had was a black one, so I got them to subtract the 500 
subtract $500 from the price. They informed me that the black one was from another dealership. I asked how many miles were on it, and they said under 20. I then received a message later stating that there's 120 miles on the car, that it was delivered from another dealership. That's why the miles are there. Now I'm concerned that they didn't pay manufacturer price, and the MSRP has more markup than I originally thought. What are your thoughts on what they could have paid for the car? Why would another dealership give up a car that is in low supply and very high demand? At the end of it all, the MSRP is still lower than the other dealerships in Pennsylvania. How should I proceed with my questioning. So well, there's a lot to unpack there, yeah, some, well, and definitely well, the, some confusion. Well, the MSRP is the MSRP, and that's set by the manufacturer. So let's okay. look at it here. On this on this printout you shared, this this the, has actually the OTD. So the, the MSRP, there you go. It has the yeah, line for MSRP yeah, sticker yeah. price. That's set by the manufacturer. Like oh, so said. this is down here at the shore. Boardwalk Acura. Okay, but I mean, yeah. can we just focus on that for a second? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm focusing on all that. Because there's some obvious confusion from how Daniel phrased his question about what MSRP is. No, the MSRP is the MSRP. And that that can change based on, so in this case, the reason they said they took the $500 off is because the red was a $500 manufacturer yes. option. Yes. Okay. Just wanted to make that really clear. Yes. So there's no real... So there's no upcharge for the black. Yeah. So hence... That's why it would be five hundred dollars less. Yeah. Now the what? Is what more. they paid the other dealer is invoice for the vehicle. Yes. So when they do a dealer trade like that, yes, you pay invoice. So sometimes you pay invoice less hold back. Yep. Sometimes you just pay invoice. See, this is why I'm concerned yeah. for Daniel because he's saying at the end of it all, the MSRP is still lower than other dealerships in PA. It's the MSRP is set by the manufacturer if the. If if there isn't an upcharge for the paint, then the MSRP, you know, the, now there could be uh, port installed accessories on a car that could impact the MSRP. Um, but the base MSRP is sixty thousand six hundred and thirty dollars, and the and the destination and handling is a thousand forty five. So add those two together, and that's the MSRP on that vehicle, unless there's any port installed accessories or in this case any well options well, that make on the, the black MSRP. one so yeah, the yeah. msrp on the black one would be sixty six hundred thirty dollars plus a thousand forty five yeah yeah yes so daniel to yes. daniel daniel yes the msrp might be lower at this dealership than another one because the msrp is the actual like value of the of the the year make model and trim so if you're comparing apples to oranges, you can find a much cheaper MSRP than another dealership. That's not the point. The point is going to be your out the door price and making sure that the, the base model actually has everything that you want on it. Correct? Well, yeah. I mean, yeah, this is an advance, he said. So I'm, it says it. Yeah, 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 yeah. The point I'm trying to make is like there's some pretty obvious, like, we're using the wrong words to describe things in this question. I just want to help Daniel understand that, like, MSRP is still lower than other dealerships in PA. That that like fundamentally doesn't actually make much sense, but I understand where he's coming from. Do you? Certainly. <laughs> <laughs> he's con I think you're suggesting he's confusing. Yeah, me and I'm trying to price. cure you up to help him. I thought I did. Yeah, that's good. I was I was under the impression that I helped him by saying forty two times that the MSRP is the MSRP, and I explained how you get the MSRP. Jeremy Crystal wants to know: Can you go over what holdback is? While you're saying that, I actually think we have a the holdback is the percentage on. of the base MSRP that the manufacturer pays to the dealer on a quarterly basis when they sell vehicles. So if this had a base MSRP of $60,000 and the holdback might be 2 or 2.5%, two let's call it 2%, so the holdback is going to be about $1,200 based on a $60,000 MSRP. Nicely done. Pop. Well, I don't know if it's nicely done, but damn it, it's done. It's done. done. Yeah. All right, let me post that yeah. there. All right. John Stephen, hey guys, ever since I was a kid, I heard the old saying, if your car needs more repairs than the value, you should probably get a new vehicle. As the original owner of a 10-year-old Ford Mustang with 200,000 miles on it, that's in good shape except for needing a new clutch and other wear and tear maintenance that will probably cost more than the value of the car. Would it make sense to just ignore the get a new car rule and just repair the costs of new and used cars uh, because, because the cost of vehicles are so inflated right now? What's your sense? What's your take on that, then? My my take is still the same. If the repairs are more than the value of the car, if you have to invest more in repairs and your actual return on investment is a negative number for having done that, 
then you explain to me how that could possibly make sense. Um, I think the, the concern is just getting that you're going to pay too much yeah. for a new car. So if, if that's the fear, then my suggestion would be is to lease the new car. And then in three years you can start. Fresh. The tricky part about this situation is since your vehicle needs work, it's not going to be worth as much. Like, you know, the, the inflated price that your vehicle could be worth versus the inflated price that the vehicle you're going to buy. If it wasn't, in need of repairs, then they kind of cancel each other out. But since it's in need of repairs, they don't cancel each other out. That's the tricky part about this. I'll take your word for it. Are we on different wavelengths tonight? <laughs> Apparently. What? The, what? <laughs> what are you said made sense? I, 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 right. I, I thought I'll, I I'll, I'll get more. Hey, you read that one. Jeez. Hey, guys. I'm loving the forum. Thanks for putting this together. So I'm looking for a midsize sedan to lease. I want to put zero down and pay about $300 a month. Am I dreaming or could something like that work? I'm negotiating with Toyota and Kia about a Camry and a K5. Any advice is much appreciated. And what do you think is reasonable for, I can't, I don't know how to work your computer to see more. Um, so it's not my strength, buddy. <laughs> it's your computer. Um, so is it reasonable? I, I mean, I don't know. What's the market in your area for for those type of vehicles? What are their advertised lease programs that they're that, that you see advertised for those vehicles in that area? Um, you know, if it, if it's a relatively inexpensive Camry, then I, I would think that might be doable. But it depends on on the area where you live and how leases are taxed. I mean, in the state of Maryland, for instance, you pay the tax on the on the um, on the selling price of the car to the lease company, so that's going to impact your your monthly payment. So, but is it possible? Yeah, I would I I would think it it might be possible depending on what the market conditions are in your given area and how leases are factored in your given area. I'm hot. I'm like you're, very. You're, you're hot like tonight. really hot. I'm really hot. Tonight. Yeah, I don't know why it's set at meat locker. Jason Pay, but thinking hard about jumping in on a reservation for a 2022 Ford Bronco. Do you think that by the time Ford may be able to start delivering on a consistent basis? What do you think? I, you know, Ford has got issues, and they admit they have issues, and they're going to continue to have issues. Yeah, we don't expect that's going to yeah. change anytime soon. Anytime soon. So. They're definitely like at the back of the pack in terms yes. of chip production. Yes. Monica McIntyre, waiting at the chip shortage to purchase a used Mazda CX-5 at the end of the year. How do you think the delay of producing 2022 models will impact prices on new and used cars? I'm concerned about used car prices. I don't want to overpay for a vehicle. I hold on to my vehicles for five plus years. Today's Tuesday, isn't it? Yes. Let's do something really quick. We didn't do this earlier. No. You know what I'm doing? You no, know what I'm thinking? I'm thinking you're going to pull up a... Um, a um the weekly auction reports, the yeah, market insights. And look, yeah, look at that, ladies and gentlemen. Overall, the market dropped another uh, more than half a point. So, so back to the trend continues. Monica's question. Yes. Waiting on the chip shortage to purchase her used vehicle. What do we think the, the delay of producing 2022s will have on new and used car prices? I, I think I think as we keep seeing the numbers increase for the global loss of production due to chip shortages. Which, yeah, um, that video hasn't come out yeah, yet, so let me pull that which, up. Yeah, which is now estimated to be 6.9 million vehicles globally lost to production because of the lack of chips. So I don't, I don't see where there's going to be any significant improvement in new car inventory uh, between now and, and the end of the year, I don't really think. So that because of that, even though wholesale prices are starting and have shown a, a decline for the past four weeks in a row now, uh, we haven't necessarily seen that reflected to any great degree in the retail asking prices. So I would suspect that even by the end of the year, if there's still a continued new car shortage, which I expect there will be, then retail prices on the used cars will not significantly decline by that. Well said. Well, I don't know. I don't know. It was, kind of, it was said. It was kind of convoluted. but I pulled up from uh, AFS Auto yes. Forecast Solutions. We're now up to an expected 6.9 million vehicles that are going to be lost. Production, yeah. there's plenty of like prior versions of this exact page where it was like 300,000, 500,000. Well, well, last, just, just last week. I think I can pull it up right here. The number was 6.3 million. 
in yeah see they update it weekly so here yes. let's actually do this really quick let's yes. um uh let's go back that's june oh that's 2013 okay we don't need to go that far back oh, well this is back from april okay ford was hit hard they're ford still was hit, hit hard. hard okay <clears throat> wow so this was back in april ladies and gentlemen it was 2.39 yes and now we're, now up, we're up to, to 6.9 and my suspicion will be that by the end of the year, it'll be eight and a half to nine million. So uh, if your vehicles lost to yeah. production, so if you're mine and you don't want to overpay for a used vehicle, uh, lease a new one. Yeah, yeah. Flying Dutchman, yeah, is awesome and doing excellent work for neophytes looking for a reasonable deal. I agree with you wholeheartedly that uh, that are there are some good dealerships out there, just so difficult to find them, especially in today's market. Yeah, Carlos yes. in Jacksonville, Florida. LOL. Yeah. It is the truth. There are good dealerships out there, but it is hard to find them. That's why we have down here. Can you see it on the screen? Yeah, dealer reviews. So more and more people put dealer reviews. Pretty please. Yes. JT, is the Toyota Camry really that much better than the Hyundai Sonata hybrid? Um, well, let me say this. The Camry's been around a lot longer than the hy- than the than the Sonata and has a uh, has a a wonderful history behind it as to be camera you're saying yes yeah. as to being a a very reliable efficient inexpensive car to maintain um now that's not to say that hyundai doesn't make a good car and that the sonata hasn't been around for a while but it it hasn't been around as long as the toyota and the history of hyundai um isn't the same as what the history of toyota has been do you mean from like a story to like i i mean like Toyota has always been known for producing quality products. Yeah. And Hyundai, when they first came to the United States, was not known for that. Now, they have, they have enhanced their reputation over the years, and they have stepped up their game significantly as far as manufacturing and engineering and, and longevity and things like that. But it's not the same as actually having the same type of history that Toyota has. Gotcha. So you lean towards the Camry? I just, yes, I think I would. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, I'm yeah, asking. Just, yeah, j- just based, just just based on, on, I believe the Camry is, or is, it's either the Camry or the Corolla that's the best selling car ever. Yeah, yeah. As, you know, because the Camry's been around for what thirty years. Yeah iconic yeah all right sam has a question pups yeah looking at buying a chevrolet pickup dealers are not willing to budge off of msrp do you think that this will change within the next three months no right now the incentives from gm are two thousand dollars off which expires on august 2nd i don't have to have a new vehicle right now and can wait six months or so in your opinion will incentives increase or go away in the near future this is a good example of what we're talking about in terms of factory ordering and taking delivery yes. in december correct yes uh, typically Historically, the the largest incentives, consumer and dealer, have been offered by the manufacturer in the month of December. Um, so you might be best served to order a truck that will arrive at the dealership in December so that you'll be able to apply whatever those incentives are at that time. Now, having said that, if the chip shortage continues the way it's going and we keep losing vehicles to production uh and if the manufacturers can't stock up the dealer lots the way they normally would then there is no incentive for them to put bigger incentives on the few vehicles they have to sell so we might not see large incentives this december if there's a continued shortage of vehicles yeah i don't think there should be an expectation that we will it is one strategy though i mean your options are you can buy at msrp right now or and you can, take and take the two thousand dollar rebate or you can factory order and try and time it up for december and, and hope you're, you're gambling yeah. yes you're, you're i mean are you better with the devil you know than the devil you don't? And in this particular case, you know MSRP less two thousand dollars in rebates. What you don't know in December is um, what the what the selling prices will be and whether or not there will be any incentives. Just because there always has been doesn't mean there always has to be. Um, and if there's, I mean, when we look at the at the monthly incentives that are out, there, yeah, I can and we up. and we have done that. And we have compared it from 
this year to last year to 2019, which was the last like quasi normal year. And what's striking is realistically the lack of incentives. The, the incentives are very minimal in comparison to what they were in 2019, which was the last quasi normal year that we've had. Yeah. So we were talking Chevrolet. Let's see. Yeah. Are there, there we are. Where are they? Well, they'd be part of Chevrolet. Yep. Yeah. I mean, there are none. Yeah. There are no national incentives right yeah. now on, on at least on any, not at least not money back. Yeah. So if you've got two thousand for something, take that runs, yeah, take it. Yeah. So you, you, there's there's no guarantee that there's going to be incentives come December. I would suspect that there probably will be only because there always has been and there's always a big push at the end of the year. But if there's nothing for them to sell the push doesn't really matter. Yep. And we just filmed a video yesterday about Jaguar Land Rover. They're the first big OEM to say, oh, crap, we don't have as many chips as we thought we would, and we're not getting them, and we're losing money. And and, and we expect in the second quarter. That, the that, next quarter up for yeah, them. Yeah, that for them, that, gonna that, that production is going to be off by 50%. But other than that, you know, everything's great. All right, let's go to Mark's <laughs> question, Pops. All right, let's see here. Greeting Zach Ray, Kimberly, and the rest of the team. Two questions. With the chip shortage and used cars going nuts with pricing, are dealers doing anything to promote their service departments more and are service departments busier? Two, since I have listened to both you and I'm holding off on buying until prices settle again, can I get the Ray Shevska stamp of approval for listening to you? Love what you and your team do. Mark, I'm thinking the answer is probably yes. I, I, I think, yeah, for, for at least listening. Ray Shevska stamp. He's doing uh, that. He really what do you mean? <laughs> what the hell was that? What's that mean? I don't, I don't what does know. that mean? Nope. Sorry, therapy session. What does that mean? Well, it just means that, you know, earlier in this broadcast, uh -huh. you know, yeah. apparently you couldn't hear what I was saying. Why is that? I don't know, because you thoroughly uh, uh, So made. so let's ask a question. Then, yes. And let's ask to the community as well. Yeah. What benefit does my dad derive from take from bringing that up at this point? I've cooled down. My soup, my soup sweats <laughs> have gone away. I'm feeling good. Yeah. What did what what benefit did you just derive from that? Like I'm, you're I'm 70 sure. years old. Yeah. You know better. I know better than uh, what to like just even bring it up. I'm sorry. But you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. I, I had the up. soup sweats. Yeah. I don't got the soup sweats. Now I'm listening. Yeah. No. And you go on and you go on and you say. Mark gets the Ray Shevska stamp of approval because he listening. listens better than I do. Yeah, I said it. But um, and, and I, you did say it, and I respect the yeah. bravado at, with which you said. It. I'm just asking the question, like yeah. the, the, I, the I'm not sure the what theoretical I'm... question, like or like the hypoth not hypothetical, the psychological question. Yeah, like what do you it makes get? me feel better? It makes okay, cool. That's fine. I'm <laughs> glad it makes you feel better. I'm glad you could help. <laughs> <laughs> now, what was the other part of his question other than just listening? Um, uh, what's are, going on in service, service departments. departments? Are they busier? You know, I I would imagine that since the new and used car departments are typically the best customers of service departments, um, if there's no or very few new cars coming in for them to to prep, there's lost revenue there. If there's very few trade-ins or used cars coming in to recondition, the recondition there's, yeah. there's lost revenue there. So... Service departments being an important factor in the dealership's health and profitability need to figure out other ways to get service customers into the dealership. So I would think that there should be um, some offers out there from dealerships uh, to their existing customer base uh, offering some type of service discounts or freebies in order to encourage their customers to come back and service there. Mark says thanks for the stamp of approval, Pops. You're welcome. <laughs> Still trying to get mine, Mark. Um, I gave you one yesterday. Did I, didn't you know, I give you one yesterday for, for closing the round with the venture Service, capital? Service um, uh, must be doing well because our dear friend, friend of the channel, Dr. Barron. Yeah. He actually got a promotion recently. Yes, he did. Yeah, he just, so. he, he's, he's, as I said to him oh, on LinkedIn. Oh, I got the wrong camera here yeah. again. As, as I said to him on, on, on LinkedIn, his LinkedIn yeah. post, I said he's like the Jeffersons because he's moving on up. <laughs> he's moving from the mini store to the BMW store. Yeah, congrats to Yanni. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. He deserves it. He's uh, he's a, a hell of a guy and um, 
really a customer centric uh, yeah. service advisor. All right, we got a couple questions here from Bill Sampson. Okay. Good evening, Ray, Kimberly, and Zach. Yes. About a half hour ago, Carvana picked up my 2014 Mercedes E350. It was really sad. I was really sad to say goodbye. And now I have to do the arduous work of finding my next ride. Anyway, this is a sales. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is a sales story to thank you for. I didn't know. Um, I didn't know where to sell until YAA. I got four offers: thirteen thousand from CarMax, fourteen ten from Kelly Blue Book, fifteen thousand from Shift, yeah. and sixteen thousand seven hundred ninety-eight dollars from Carvana. Wow. wow. What a range. I talked to the Kelly B Blue Book dealer who said uh, she would go from 14.1 to 15.5. Okay. Also a good testament yeah. for what you should do with the, the, the KBB numbers. What a racket even online. Thanks to you, I have a much higher down payment. Thanks to you, I have a much higher down payment. It yeah. just shows to shop around. That's great. That's awesome. Yes. That is also going to get A. You, you can, yeah, here, yeah. yeah. Put, yeah. put your headphones on because I'm going to surprise you. Sure I'm surprise you, you, yeah. Down goes Shevska. <laughs> Down goes Shevska. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's see. So Bill's next question here is. Yes. All right, so to follow up, how long do you think I need to wait to buy my next car? Most likely a 2020 Audi S7, rich taste, but not foolish at a reasonable price. There is absolutely few cars to choose from to really compare. If you have any thoughts on this car, reliability, longevity, value holding, etc., I would appreciate it. You worked for a long time at an Audi dealership or for, for, yeah. Yeah, yeah, for, for a while at an Audi yeah. dealership. Thoughts the, on well, the, the first thing I was going to say, what you should do for your next ride is Lyft and Uber <laughs> for the time being. Yep. Um, an Audi A7 is a beautiful car. S7. S7. So S7. I'm sorry. Bigger engine. Yeah. Um, it's a beautiful car. Um, they're, they're a bear to maintain. They yep. can be very expensive to maintain. Um, but they are just an absolutely phenomenal car. Um and like most German cars, they depreciate quicker than most Asian cars. Yep. So, so I'm going to pull up on the screen. Just, I mean, they are really gorgeous vehicles. I'm going to do a quick shout out. There's a website out there, um, Car Edge. We've talked about them a bit in the past. I'm very interested. I really don't know much about like what Car Edge is like business model is. I think they do ads. That's how they make money. Anyway, the reason I bring them up is because I want to see if we can. Yeah, here we go. Audi models. Oh, I don't want to compare. There's a way that you can actually view. Oh, here it is. Make Audi S. Wow, they don't have the S7. Okay. Well, I was going to show like the depreciate. We'll just do like an S5. Um, they do depreciation curves. Yes. Uh, calculate depreciation. There you go. It's a pretty tricky website to use. I don't know how accurate the data is. But I, I think it's pretty good. Um, so you can start to get a sense for what the depreciation curve yes, is. Yes, and you can also get vehicle. a sense as to when major dilemmas occur. I think they have that as well, yeah. yeah if um, I remember correctly. Yeah, yeah. Again, website's not the easiest to use. Insurance, they're trying to sell insurance. Depreciation insurance, fuel. Oh, maintenance? Yeah. Yeah, there you go. They have like the, the probability of a maintenance, a major repair for each year, the expected maintenance in each year. So there you go. This is a resource that you may want to use, Bill. Um, and in general, I think our advice to you, especially on a used vehicle, is you're going to be waiting a yes, while. Yes, yes. Um, there's a reason. Yeah. There's a reason you were able to get as much as you got for your yep. your Mercedes, um, and and that reason is going to continue for a while. And if we look at the market insights from Black Book, yeah, let's go car segment, prestige, luxury car, which is yes. like, I think what it, or maybe it's luxury car. I don't know. I guess it's luxury car. Um, down week over week. This yeah. is again just on the wholesale side. So we'll need to see what happens on the retail side. Yes. Yeah. Okay. This is from Chris Corey. I might be shifting to a lease deal and I'm wondering if the do it signing part is negotiable. For yes. example, they list out offers shown based on $3,099 due at lease signing, including $199. $199 first monthly payment, the cap cost reduction, acquisition fee, mm -hmm. tax title, everything. Um, yeah, assuming well, it's well j may I say something? Uh, please. The, the, the 3000 you can you bring that up again so I can see the $3,099 does not include your tax title and registration license fees. Can you so, explain like cuz it we get a lot of questions about it, and it's incredibly confusing zero down lease. In this case what the hell is well, the 3099? Well, this this is this is some manufacturers um, advertised lease 
for yeah. whatever model it is that most dealers can't do because typically it's based on a model that somebody doesn't have in stock at a particular <laughs> MSRP. And for instance, if, if you were in Maryland where I last worked um, and it was $3,099 um, down plus tax title license and registration, well, tax is... 6% of whatever that selling price is. So that's, you know, if it's a $20,000 car, that's $1,200 right there in tax before you get to the registration title and license and all that. So in these type of situations, $3,099 can rapidly turn into $4,000 or $4,500 down. So um, the, the do it lease signing is negotiable. But remember, for every $1,000 that's not put down, the lease payment typically goes up $30 a month. So that $3,100 is approximately $90 added to that $199 payment. But then we always talk about how you should put no money down on it. Yeah, yeah, because whatever that? money whatever money you put down, if you put like that included $2250 capitalized cost reduction. What that means is the the lender is paying $2250 less for the vehicle than they normally would have. Now, God forbid your car gets totaled, you don't get that $2,250 back. That's not your money to get back. So one of the reasons I suggest you never put money down on a lease is all you're doing is by putting the money down is you're artificially, well, not artificially, you, you, yeah, yeah. you are lowering your payment. You're and, reducing and, the cap cost, and yeah, the cap cost is essentially just... Lowering a, the payment, and, and it's all because of the money you're putting down, not because of anything that the dealership did to help lower the price of the car. So, and you're just reducing the capital like liability for the, the, the bank, the, yeah, the leasing company, the yeah. company that actually has to buy the car. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's what you're doing. So, yeah. you so by putting money down, you're just buying a cheaper payment. So, it is or, negotiable, or don't put the money down, agree to a higher payment, and that money that you would have put down, put that into a separate account. And if you need to draw off of it on a monthly basis to help you make. Yeah. The, the, that lease payment, which instead of now being one ninety nine, might be two ninety or two eighty nine. Yeah. So you know, draw ninety dollars out a month to to help make the lease payment. So we're going to refresh the page here in just a second. But we did get Robert did DM me. Robert was okay. the gentleman who okay. had the three questions. Yes. So hey, let's uh, let's give it a yes. shot. I'm going to give him a call real quick. You want to toss on your headphones? Pop? Yes. Let's see if we can see if we can help Robert out. I'll do my best. Oh, give me one second here. Oh, there we go. I was wondering. Pennsylvania fella. Uh, At least his phone number is. Give me one second, one second. Mm -hmm. I'll put there. Right, let me two one. Okay. There we go. All right. Okay. Giving Robert a call. Yes. Oh my God, it's ringing. I hope he picks up. <laughs> Good evening, gentlemen. Is this Robert? Uh, hello, sir. Yes, it is. Well, I am so honored to have the uh, opportunity to chat with you, Robert. How can we help you? And also, just before you hop uh, in, Robert, is this not the coolest YAA member perk of all time? Like, this is pretty cool. I like this. This is pretty cool, man. I really appreciate what you guys are doing. And, uh, you know, glad to hear congratulations on the, uh, you know, securing the funds. I think you're doing it for the right reasons. So I, you definitely, I think, deserve, you know, everything that comes to you. So good. Well, well appreciate you. it. Do you mind speaking up just a touch? Um, coming through a little quiet. Yeah, let me just, um, sorry. Let me switch my. Okay, is that any better? Phil? Much. Yes, Much. thank you. Is this any better, fellows? Yes. yes, 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 yes. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, so I just have three, uh, well, a few questions. Number one, um, I'm in New Jersey, um, actually in Ocean City, right next to you guys. Okay. And um, and um, found a, I located a Subaru 
uh, WRX STI in Massachusetts. So um, I'm, I've lined that up to purchase that. That should be in, in about a, in a few weeks. And I'm very unsure about this process. My plan is to fly there and then drive the vehicle home. However, with registration in New Jersey and Massachusetts, I was wondering if you could provide any guidance on that. Uh, uh, you know, in terms of, I, 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 I you know, Massachusetts is uh, is unusual at best, um, and Melissa, Mo- might, be and Melissa to- <laughs> might be able to help us with this more than I can. But I don't think that Massachusetts has a drive out tag, a not. temporary drive out tag. So you can't drive out with that car unless there is a valid title and registration and and plates on the car now typically that would that would be massachusetts title and registration and plates so how you do that for new jersey is uh, quite honestly beyond me well you'd have to ship it well yeah you could ship it without yeah, yeah, yeah because yeah. they can put it on a trail no no, no. i i the only reason yeah. i say that with some conviction is because yes. just very recently Melissa is saying in the chat that they do not, Ray, you're correct. Yeah. Um, this very, I mean, not very recently, I think this was about a year ago when we did the broker, when we were doing the negotiating. I didn't know about this. I felt terrible at the time. This guy in New Hampshire or something like that or Maine. And he's like, oh, we got this great deal in, in Massachusetts. And he got there and he's like, well, I can't drive it off. Yeah. And you know how much egg on my face I had? <laughs> I, I did all the research after that. So, yeah, shipping it is your option. Yes. You, so you, you won't be able to drive it off the dealership lot. And, and drive through Massachusetts to get back to New Jersey. That's number one. And then, I, I okay, so I could ship it, or I'm, or I'm assuming I could complete the purchase without seeing the vehicle and then register it in my state and then go do this. Does that sound like it may be possible, although it may not be intelligent? <laughs> Um, Isn't the trick there going to be the amount of time it takes to get yes. it actually registered? And will the dealership just... I, I think what you're going to need to do, in in all honesty, is um, even if you want to fly up there and complete the transaction up there, at least buying it, you wouldn't, you shouldn't pay... Um, I don't know if, you, if you're going to ship it, you're not going to have to pay Massachusetts sales tax. Um, but you could fly up there to complete the transaction and, and then have the car put onto a trailer and, and shipped down to you in New Jersey. Um, the Massachusetts dealer could give you either the certificate of origin, if it's a brand new car, or the Massachusetts title that they have. And they could assign it to you, and then you can go register the vehicle at Motor Vehicle here in New Jersey uh, once the vehicle gets here. Okay, uh, that's that's great. Yeah, thanks for that. Thanks for that. And then um, not to take up too much time, just two quick uh, questions. Uh, uh, number one would be: How long after I purchase a new car do I have to get an extended warranty for the car? I know you've gone over this before, but. Um, like to hear it again (laughs) um there's no there's no (laughs) there's no time limit yeah at any point is that correct yeah the tricky thing that you're going to run into is um like so for example we work with aul and if the vehicle's out of the new car uh warranty then we have to get a pre-purchase inspection i have one on file to make sure that the issue or the concern that a lot of the administrators have is that there'd be fraud so you'd ha- you'd know you have an issue, and now you're getting an extended warranty, and then you're you know you're, you're using it. Um, and Kimberly's saying in the chat, you can get it anytime. Just keep in mind it's based on time and miles. So yeah, you'll you'll have less options the, more, the longer you wait, but also like that's that makes sense, it's logical. Um, so no, but you can do it anytime you want. And our recommendation is obviously negotiated at the dealership, and if you unless you have to finance it, that's the only reason you should do it at the dealership in that moment is if you want to roll it into your loan. Other than that, do it a week later, do it two weeks later, do, do it, it two, two years, years later. It doesn't, yeah, matter. doesn't matter. You do it when you, when you're comfortable doing it. Yep. Understood. Thank you. And uh, last question is uh, accessories added onto a new vehicle. Um, so, so what I'm looking at is there's some accessories on this window sticker that were added, at, added at the factory uh, oh. that doesn't include, um installation costs right and then 
there are some accessories that they're quoting me that I would I would guess that they need to be put on at the dealership in which I'm seeing installation costs added. Uh, are those installation costs, uh, I guess, normal and are they negotiable? Uh, is is this a vehicle that is incoming to the dealership? It's on its way to the dealership. They said if I get my requests in in the next couple of days, it has a possibility they could put them on in the factory. However, there is a few of them that uh, they say, like the uh, front lip spoiler or whatever, that that's typically done at the dealership, I, 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 I'm guessing. And are those things that you wanted to add? Those are the things that I wanted to add, okay. a couple of them uh, uh, you know, for, for the quotes. Everything is everything in life is negotiable. How much they're willing to negotiate is is another story in this particular market. Um, my suspicion would be uh, that since you're coming from New Jersey and going up to Massachusetts, uh, they have to be thinking to themselves, they're never seeing you ever again for service. So they have no future money to make off of you from bringing the vehicle in for warranty work or any service work. Uh, so with that in mind, they probably won't be in a hurry to discount the the labor it takes to install these uh, items that you would want to have that are dealer installed. Understood. Understood. And uh, yeah, that's that's all my questions. Gentlemen, thanks so much for uh, really the phone call. I appreciate it. And, uh, you know, thanks for doing what you do. Uh, you're providing an invaluable service to I, you know, I, I, men I, and I, womankind. If, if I may pat ourselves on the back, especially this guy over here who I've given a hard time to tonight, I don't think there's very many outfits out there that actually would do what we just did, <laughs> which is to call a member to help them. Who does that? <laughs> yeah, it feels pretty cool. <laughs> uh, but Robert, I'm glad we could help. And uh, and when you do get the vehicle, please take a picture and send it to us. Put it on the put on the community forum, please. Yes, That'd be really please. awesome. Will do, gentlemen. Thank you very much, and uh, have a good night. Oh, you and too. if you make it up uh, on the Longport Bridge, you come up to our, our side of the island, we'll, yeah. uh, we can go hang out. Well, it's a different island. I know, but I'm saying you're in Ocean City. Go across. <laughs> yeah. What bridge is that? Yeah, well, that's the that's The, the Ocean, Ocean City, City bridge. bridge, then the Longport Bridge. Yeah. Anyway, come anyway, hang out with hopefully us. Hopefully, we'll see you on Abseekin Island sometime. <laughs> <laughs> see you, Robert. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. He's like, all right, I'm done okay. with these guys. Yeah. All right. I don't, I, I don't blame him. I put in the messages. I put in the chat. If you want us to call you, doesn't even have to be. <laughs> oh my god! Doesn't even have to be car related. You want us to call you? Yeah, just to just just, to just call. DM me on yeah. the community. Yeah. Um, yeah. If you yeah. didn't know, back on the community, you can DM. Yeah. You can click on yeah that, and then you can send DMs. DM but, me. Send me your phone number. We'll call but, you next. But, but really, you want us to call a friend? Really, who does this? You want us I to mean, call a friend of a friend? Yeah. Who literally? Who does this? What business does that? I have an idea. Uh oh. All right, let's answer some more questions, and I have an idea. Okay. This is a terrible idea. Probably. <laughs> Sean O'Connell. Yeah. I went to Knoxville Toyota looking for new used Tacomas. They have two new and two used, and the used ones are priced the same as new. <laughs> I'm taking Ray's advice and waiting 12 to 18 months for this nonsense to level off. Spot uh, on. Yes, I think that's a good idea, Sean. Ali M. Which brand's models have the most inventory, which are, uh, have the least is it regional here in la area it seems slim pickings for cars i'm interested in subaru and mazda let's pull up the yeah, data well uh, the last time we checked at the beginning of this month and, and obviously next week we'll be getting updates but subaru had one of the lowest, lowest. day supply of vehicles in the industry probably I think, ever i think they were they were operating on an eight day supply of cars uh, mazda might not be quite as bad as Subaru and one brand that and 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 this all can be regionalized because they all have zones and this is why we built and, the market yes. price report. and and one brand that seems to have more inventory than most is Volvo yeah I'm trying to find I'm not it. sure if you're interested oh, I in think Volvo's. I, I think I put it back on the uh, YA community and like the general channel uh let me see real quick Days supply. I keep forgetting that I put it. Yeah, here you go. Sorry about that, Ali. Sorry, sorry, everyone. Day supply of inventory. So just search for this. I put it in the buying channel. Just search for that day supply, and I'll update this monthly as we get it. And then remember that back in the YA app, when you run Ali a market price report, and I encourage you use our new search by name instead of by VIN. Like just search for Toyota something, well, Mazda something, well, Subaru, Subaru yeah, something. I mean, yeah. And then you'll be able to on all of those different. 
market price reports, you'll be able to see what the local average is for that dealership. Or for, excuse me, for that um, brand, for that, that model. Yeah. Okay, let me go back to the thread real quick. Scroll down, scroll down, scroll down. Okay, two more. Yes. And then my idea. Okay. Kevin Kukler. I know, and then there's a question on there from Megan about dealerships in, in Vineland, New Jersey. There you go. Okay. Uh, are there any dealerships in Vineland, New Jersey right. area that... Mr. Ray. That, that would be me. <laughs> uh, that, um, actually, I, I, I know of, of a Nissan dealership there only because the people that owned or people I used to work for or work with many, 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 many years ago. Um, I'm not really familiar with any of the dealerships in the Vineland area at this point in time, and I'm, I'm in no position to recommend or not recommend any dealership, but I would suggest you do your due diligence um, looking at the Better Business Bureau to see what kind of ratings they have in the Better Business Bureau, look at Yelp, dealer rate, or things like that to see <clears throat> And look at the YAA community. <laughs> <laughs> do that before you do anything else. <laughs> no, but this is why we yeah. are trying to ask more and more people yes. to genuinely, because everything you just said, which I find beautiful and also humorous, is like we don't have a great answer to that. But the great answer is if more if, and more people yeah. leave dealer reviews, like for example, Mission Viejo Acura and Mission Viejo California, Harry at Freedman, Freedom Kia in Morgantown. Yeah. Right. The more we get in here, the better. Yes. The and better, that way, better. and that way, um, it's based on real shopping experiences. My as dad a has 43 years of retail, yeah. you know, sales experience and he knows good dealerships, but like he doesn't know all 15,000 dealerships and 17,000. And then the issue is you go to Dealer Raider and other things like yeah. that. I mean, those are lead gen sites. A lot of them, yes. So the best option we have is to work together. All right. I like that. I like it too. Yeah. Kevin, rumor has it Kia is discontinuing the Stinger after the 2022 model year, possibly transitioning it to an EV. Historically, what effect does the discontinuation of a model have on the price of used versions, used options? A very well, interesting if, question. If, if, it, if it is a relatively popular or cultish type vehicle, as I believe the Stinger is, um, then if they discontinue it, uh, those that are out there can become more valuable because there's a certain percentage of people that want one and will be willing to pay for one. If it is a high volume type of vehicle, um, you know, where it's like dog poop and it's everywhere, um, then, it, you know, it has a negative impact on the values if it's discontinued. Well said. Thank you for that, Pops. Well, except for the dog poop part. I mean, it was yeah. just one yeah. way to describe it. Yeah. All right. This is from Dunn Flying. Although I don't don't intend to replace our two vehicles until late 2023, it will it will most likely entail trading them both in and replacing them with one vehicle. Are there any special considerations when trading in two vehicles? Thanks in advance. Interesting question. Yes. Here's here's what you need to know. Uh, in most states that give you a tax credit for trade ins. You will only get a tax credit on one of the two vehicles. And so you want to make sure that they're giving you the tax credit for the one with the highest value. That is going to get tonight's first. Yeah. Yeah, buddy. You didn't hear that because you yeah, didn't have buddy. your headphones well, on. That I, was the first yeah, yeah buddy. Well, uh, but most people don't know that. That was you, awesome. Yeah, you only get a tax credit for one trade, but not both. So you know, you want to make sure they're giving you the tax credit for the trade that has the the highest value or the higher value. Nicely done. Yeah, well, that's that's, that's what you're paying me for. There you go. Kimberly yeah. Kimberly says with the greater value. Yeah. That's cool. Thank I you, had, Kimberly. Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay, so you want to know what my idea was? Uh, probably not. I don't know. I don't think we should. I don't think we should do it. Yeah, no, well, let's hear it. Then as a community, we can decide. Okay, yeah, yeah. That, yeah. Ah, that's a great idea. Yeah. All right, let me create a poll really quick. Oh, got it. I didn't say it had to be a poll, but apparently it does. Should we call my si – no. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> no. Sure, why not? <laughs> okay, so we went from one no to a yes. Poll, poll pop up in a second. I think that'd be fun. I think she'd kill you. She'd be watching the Olympics. Yeah, she probably is watching Yeah, she Olympics. is. She loves the Olympics. 
Um, okay, let me do a quick refresh, see if there are any other questions that came through. Otherwise, we can go through the live chat, and then um, if there's nothing else in the live chat, we will call it a night. We appreciate everyone, obviously, that is here. Um, okay, nothing else there. I will take a moment, though, while we're waiting for some poll responses. Yes. The Success Stories channel yes. is just incredible. Um, I don't know if you've been in here much. Uh, I think, today, I think I you're taking a little, you got a little overwhelmed. The community has grown so quickly. Yes. A huge shout out to um, Melissa, Space, Mike Dean, yes. Pops, Justice. Um, it's incredible. Kimberly, of course, as well up there yes. at the top. Um, so it's hard to keep up with everything, but we're doing the best we can. Also, part of the reason that we're hiring, I don't know what our hiring well, well, and, and is truth, to get more and, auto And truth be told, it's not as much for me or you to, to offer feedback. I, I think a lot of it, it, it's more important if it comes from our community members, everyone helping each other. Now, that's not to say that, you know, I don't get, get in there and I won't be involved because I will. Yeah. Um, you know, I try and answer. Um, uh, Look how happy she is. Yes. I try and answer people in, in the forum. I try and answer commenters on the YouTube channel. Um, so, but you yes. You do a great job. You do a really, really great job. Yeah, there's a lot, though. There's yes. a lot in here. I wanted to shout out those success stories. Looks like we have more than one answer to the poll, so we're going to end it very quickly. Oh, God. <laughs> Drum roll, please. She'll kill you. Drum roll, please. 13 <laughs> votes, Dad. Yeah. 13 well, votes well. in one minute. Yeah. Well, you just tell your sister it's, uh, it's the community's live. fault. I actually don't know her number off the top of my head, so that's probably going to. Well, I know it's 70, in your phone. 76% say yes. Yeah, no, I know they do. Also, we should like call your brother one show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We should give Kenny a call. Yeah. <laughs> we can just make this a full family affair. Yeah, yeah. He's probably out taking a walk. Now. All right. We will not call my sister only because I don't think that's really fair to her. She did let me live stream for her from her place. The other you know, day. and 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 you know, just to, if I can use one of your phrases, just to level set. You know, she does let you stay at her house when you go back to Merlin. And last time I checked, other than you eating all her food, she doesn't charge you. Actually, it costs her. So tonight's stream has been emotionally taxing for me. <laughs> I've got a lot to process. Um, all right, let's call it a night, Pops. Thank you for everyone for being here. Um, yeah, I mean, super exciting with the fundraising stuff. Yes. Really just to make it, again, to make it clear to everyone, we're hiring so many different things to try and just make this even better. Like the vision for what we're doing hasn't changed at all. My conviction for the, it, my dad's the, conviction The good news it. is that a, that a, a dear, dear friend of mine who is um, one of the best people that I know in the car business as far as being customer-centric and, and understanding that it's, it, it's not supposed to be an adversarial type of conflict between customer and dealership personnel, has has offered up his services if, God forbid, anything were to ever happen to me or if Zach needs and to get... And then the broadcast, don't wait, want to... Wait, 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 don't, wait. I don't want if, you to... Or if you ever need to get an additional uh, opinion or voice... I don't think that's the given... point, Dad. The point isn't for an additional opinion or voice. Like, people... And you guys tell me in the chat, but, like, people like our report and our relationship. And honestly, yeah. that's why you should go on some more walks because... The, the likelihood of YAA turning good, into what it should be is yeah. because you're around. Well, the good news is I am going to walk from the parking garage at the show on Saturday <laughs> to the restaurant at the, at the uh, Hard Rock Cafe and then back over to the showboat so I can take you to the fight Saturday night. Should we, should we let our community know that the live stream for Saturday night will actually be Sunday night this week? Apparently not. Mike, I feel like tonight's stream is a train wreck, so thank you for that. <laughs> Jenny, thank you for being here. Yes, yes we'll see you guys all. all this weekend. We appreciate everyone being a part of this. I'm telling you, man, just a couple walks. Okay, okay, geez.